Where does this leave Brexit? It does seem as though we are getting towards the end game, aren't we, at least? Yeah, I think so. I think the, the two headlines, the two votes yesterday, the more important one is the approval of the, uh, you know, the second reading or not. Um, but um, ultimately, this, is, this makes UK investable again. Right. Previously, it was kind of binary, binary situation where if uh, you know, you, if you, the, you, so long as the risk of uh, no deal exit exists, uh, then uh, you you still have this binary uh, risk. Um, but um, but now it seems like it's just a matter of timing, rather than uh, uh, if there's going to be a deal. Um, of course, there's still a small chance that you have a no no deal exit in, you know, whenever the new deadline is. Ken, uh, but, the thing is, all sorts of amendments can be added to make it unpalatable for, <laughs> for Boris Johnson et al. But does this close down this window where a lot of people have been making money from sterling and how they've been playing the whole Brexit debate while this has been going on? Because if we could just bring up this chart, it actually shows that we are, in effect, at the average level for sterling now. Mm. from when that referendum took place and the immediate aftermath. And if we can have a look at that, guys, and at what, 128 and change, right. if you will, it's, it's a difficult one to see which way it goes, really. So I think the, the, the latest round of optimism um, is probably well priced in. Uh, a lot of the surge in the sterling has to do with short squeeze, and I think that trade is pretty much complete. So we're kind of balanced positioning now. And that means the well, any additional news will, make, will move the market, right? So, I, but I think it, once that's the chart I'm talking passage, about, yes. middle of the range since that Brexit vote, right? Um, if we get eventual passage of the uh, of the of this deal, then I think we could break 130 uh, pretty easily. That's not much Stay of a call, is it, Ken? We it's not much of a already. call. The, the bigger call was the previous eight big figures, and um, that's 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 the short squeeze part that's already uh, already in the price. Right, so yes, there's less juice left in the table. <laughs> Ken, it's Tom here in Beijing. I just want to reference a soundbite from Joachim Fels from PIMCO, who we spoke to earlier, who thinks that actually an extension isn't such a bad thing for markets. Let's take a listen. I think the uncertainty continues, but uh, it looks increasingly unlikely that we get some form of no-deal hard Brexit. So I think an extension would be seen as a positive sign. It gives more time to negotiate the exit. Do you agree with that analysis? And secondly, if we get an election, which is also potentially on the cards, how do the markets price that in? I agree with that conclusion. Basically, less chance for no deal is good for the markets. Um, and w th this probably makes general election more likely just because, uh, you know, Boris Johnson's conservatives are ahead in the polls and they feel confident to take that election. Uh, so altogether, I think this does uh, allow the UK to, uh, to kind of plan ahead uh, after, uh, after the exit. Mm. Do you look at UK equities at this point, or do you want to steer clear until you get some more clarity? Actually, in September, we moved to overweight UK equities um, because we feel that the odds of a no-deal Brexit is already falling at that time. And um, I think now it makes us more, uh, more confident. Of course, the initial response tends to be uh, the domestic demand types of uh, smaller cap types of names. Um, but I think, generally speaking, like I said before, this makes the UK investable again, and I think that UK will become a uh, you know a normal part of allocations again, and I think that's a pretty uh, pretty important, uh, I guess, medium to long-term call. Yeah.